gentlemen, uh, welcome to Ariel Helwani's MMA Show! Back in your life on this Tuesday, September 4th, 2018. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ariel Hawani back inside our New York City studio. I hope you didn't miss me too much yesterday. We were off Labor Day here in the United States, Canada, some other places as well. I know not everyone celebrates Labor Day, but we do here, so we were off. But as we typically do, no show Monday, we come back on a Tuesday. So today, Tuesday feels like Monday. Wouldn't leave you hanging as we approach UFC 228. That is this weekend in Dallas, Texas. I'll be heading out on Thursday, so look out for that coverage. But there is much to discuss, my friends, on this episode of the Helwani Show. Now, I will also say right off the top, I must give a, a huge thank you. I must say thank you so much to the great Lenny Hart, who I lost my music there. But uh, in any event, this makes it a little more dramatic. Thank you very much to Lenny Hart for giving us that new intro. I missed having her at the top of the show. I missed having her a part of the show, and she was oh so kind to uh, deliver that for us, record it for us um, from the kindness of her heart. I really appreciate that. And she she is a legend. She is a living legend. If you don't know who Lenny Hart is, she is the voice of pride, and she still is a part of the MMA world. Of course, she does stuff for Ryzen. She's done some Bellator. I do believe she's also done some one, but I wanted to have her a part of the show because back in the day we used to have her say my name. That, of course, came from an interview that we did many moons ago in the AOL days. We just took it and spliced it in there. Uh, now she actually made us an intro. And so I think that that is a massive upgrade. So thank you very much, Lenny Hart. Thank you to Malcolm as well, uh, who helped set it all up. I really appreciate it. And it is an honor to have you a part of this program. So today on the show, we are talking, of course, 228 and other fine things. I'll run down the lineup and then I'll get to our first guest of the day. Ally Quinto will join us at 345 from Dallas. He is there to corner his good friend Aljamain Sterling. So I look forward to catching up with Rage and Al. 325, we'll talk to Sage Northcutt. And and I know a lot of you are thinking that we're, we're going to talk about the Logan Paul stuff and we might talk about it. But we're also going to talk about the fact that he is on the road to becoming a free agent. And this is a very interesting time for young Sage Northcutt. So I look forward to having him on the program at 325. 305, we'll talk to Kamara Usman. You'll recall last week on the show, Tyron Woodley said, if Darren Till misses weight on Friday, he is not fighting backup fighter Kamara Usman. He's either going to fight Darren Till or not fight at all. He didn't really say enough. He, he, it was more, I'm just going to fight the guy who's overweight and I'm not going to fight. Usman because I'm not a guy who's just going to fight someone on 24 hours notice. And so I'm curious to get Usman's take on all this because he's going to Dallas. He's cutting weight. He's the backup guy, but perhaps they didn't tell Woodley that. I want to get Usman's thoughts on it all. Uriah Faber is going to join us at 245 and he has an announcement to make and it's about UFC 229 weekend. So stay tuned for that. I'm looking forward to having him on. Uh, Trevor Whitman will be on at 225, one of the very best coaches in the game. And he's coming off the win for Justin Gaethje. Mike Perry at 145. Talk about all the drama with Donald Cerrone and Jackson Wink. And then James Vick in his first interview since losing to Justin Gaethje will join us at 125. But first, it is an absolute honor to have the living legend on the program. He's been on once before. There's a lot going on in his life. There's a lot going on with Golden Boy these days as far as boxing and MMA is concerned. I've been trying to get him on the program for quite some time. Very excited to say hello to Oscar De La Hoya, the golden boy himself. Oscar, how are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure to talk to you once again, Oscar. Thank you for doing this. And uh, I know we are on the road to Triple G Canelo. That is coming up in less than two weeks. But we are an MMA show, Oscar, and you are uh, a hot topic in this sport. So if you don't mind, I'd love to start there. Why are you getting into the MMA world, Oscar? Well, for the for the same reason... Uh the same reason that I got I got myself into boxing, and that's to uh, make sure, obviously, that the, the the fighters are treated fairly. To uh, making sure that uh, they have uh, 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 an outlet to make as much money as possible, and to to obviously find the next superstars in in in, in the sport. And 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 you know, part of the reason uh, as well, and probably the primary reason is because I I, I actually love watching MMA and obviously I love boxing. 
When did you first decide that this was something that you wanted to get involved in from a business standpoint? When did this idea first come about? Well, it, it first came about uh, a couple of years ago. Um, but most recently, uh, I've, been, I've been having MMA fighters uh, approach me left and right or write me uh, um, and, and, and telling me that, uh, you know, that, that MMA fighters uh, don't get paid enough uh, you know whether whether it's a championship uh, uh, caliber fighter or whether it's a fighter who has uh, uh, one or two fights, uh, and 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 you know it, it 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 makes me sick to my stomach that you know uh, main event fighters who uh, who are under no obligation uh, uh, with anybody come up to me and tell me that that they're getting paid peanuts. So I think I think I can come in. And make a difference. I, I think, like with my formula uh, that I implemented uh, with Golden Boy Promotions uh, right from the start, I think I can uh, change uh, the way uh, fighters are are, are are compensated. You say you have a formula. For those that don't know, what is that formula, and how do you bring that over to this sport? <laughs> pay pay them more money. Okay, easy as that. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. I'm sure a lot of fighters would be on board. Um, November 24th, Inglewood, California, the Forum. That's that's the debut event, correct? Correct. That's our debut event uh, at the Forum. And uh, look, uh, we have arguably the, the two biggest names uh, uh, in MMA. Uh, these are the pioneers. Uh, they, they started uh, uh, with the UFC, and uh, they've had two uh, incredible fights together. Uh, Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz uh, uh, will once again uh, uh, clash horns and, and give the fight fans uh, uh, their money's worth. So, but you know, the fact that I'm including them in uh, in all uh, uh, in all revenue shares uh, makes a huge difference. Uh, you know, Tito Ortiz and Chuck Liddell deserve it. They're legends. Uh, they deserve to uh, uh, be treated uh, the right way. Could you tell us how much they're going to make? How much they stand to make on this fight? Well, all, all I can say is that they're going to make the most money they've ever made in their in their in their in their careers, um, and I know that for a fact. Uh, the fact that we're the fact that we're including them in all revenue shares uh, is is uh, is a big game changer for for both guys. And uh, you know, this fight was relatively easy to make uh, uh, because we do include them in all in all revenues uh, 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 that are coming in uh, to the pot. So, and and look, I mean. What what fighter uh, in the UFC uh, uh, can can say that? I mean, other than maybe uh, 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 Conor McGregor uh, that's fighting in October. Okay, what percentage of the revenue are they getting? Obviously, they're not getting 100. percent Is it a 50-50 split? Well, I can't I can't really disclose uh, uh, any type of information like that. But uh, let's just say that both guys are going to be uh, compensated very well. Are they the main event? They are the main event, and we let me tell you one thing: the way we do it with Golden Boy Promotions uh, in boxing, I'm gonna stack this card uh, from top to bottom. Uh, you know, this is this is this is a sport that I, I'm, I'm I'm getting familiar with. I I I I do have to say that in the beginning, I I did criticize uh, MMA. Uh, 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 you know, and, and the truth of the matter is, because I did feel threatened. Uh, the fact that MMA has grown so much, the fact that the UFC has like taken over, basically, I felt a little threatened. So it was my mistake and my part to 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 uh, to to attack um, um, the MMA world. But let me tell you one thing: I respect it. Like there's no tomorrow. These fighters fight their heart off. These fighters are are in there risking their lives, and I strongly feel that they deserve uh, uh, the best compensation uh, that that they that they can uh, get hold of. The card on November 24th, Oscar, will that be an all-MMA card? It will be an all-MMA card uh, from top to bottom. Uh, I, plan, I plan on including uh, uh, an amateur tournament uh, where I can hopefully attract the best amateurs uh, uh, in MMA and include them. Uh, but I want to I wanna, I wanna, uh, uh, put a card together that people are going to be very proud of. Do you know if they'll be competing in a ring or a cage? It'll be a cage, just okay. like just just exactly how the UFC uh, uh, um, um, uh, puts together their events. That's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna give uh, the fight fans the best fight in the cage. This is a uh, this is a uh, yeah. This is a uh, uh, just just 
just like uh, just like the UFC does. We're going to do the same thing. And will it be pay per view? It will be pay per view. Any idea how much it will cost? Oh, not yet. We're putting all that together. I mean, obviously, I have a, a, a my my time right now is uh, uh, consumed by uh, uh, our upcoming fights that we have, uh, including the Triple G Canelo fight. But uh, uh, we're 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 putting all that together as we speak. Uh, I'm hiring a team of people that, that we have in place uh, in order to uh, to deliver the best product uh, possible to the MMA fans. Is this going to be called Golden Boy MMA, or do you have another name on your mind? Uh, uh, it, it is Golden Boy MMA. Okay. Um, we uh, we're still we're still like I said trying to figure out uh, logistics. But uh, let me tell you one thing: there's no other promoter, uh, boxing or MMA, that knows how to do it best. We we at Golden Boy Promotions uh, know how to promote fighters. We know how to build fighters. We know how to put fights together uh, in order to make uh, uh, the, please the fans. So uh, it, it's no different than uh, than actually putting a, a, a boxing event together. I'm sure I'm sure uh, that uh, that uh, you know we have our, our, our work cut out for us. But look, we have uh, competent people. We have people that we've hired that know the MMA world, and uh, we, we, uh, we're very confident that we'll have uh, the best product uh, that, uh, that the fans can watch. Are you going to be the face of the organization? Are you going to be in the same role that you are in, in the boxing wor world, or are you going to bring in someone else to head that up? Well, I, I, I personally feel that I have to be the face. Yeah. Uh, because because uh, of, of the only the, the, the fact that I've laced up the gloves, the fact that I'm a fighter, uh, people respect that. Fighters respect that, and uh, it, it, I, I strongly feel that uh, being the face of the MMA uh, uh, is, is is very important uh, in order to attract uh, uh, the best talent out there. Could you tell us any other fighters that you're talking to or have signed already? Any other names that are going to be a part of this on November 24th? No, we have everything. We have everything under wraps, and let's just say that. Uh, that a lot of people are going to be surprised and shocked uh, when we announce uh, the undercard and, uh, and and what lineup we have in store for everybody. Um, when do you expect to announce these these fights and names? Very soon in the next in the next couple of weeks. Okay. And are you like? Can you come out and say we, we you know this? People have competed with Dana White. You've competed with Dana White as far as media is concerned. Are you coming out to compete with the UFC? Do you feel like they are ripe for the taking? No, no, not at all. There's no competition whatsoever. No, what I'm, what I'm trying to do is just open up another door uh, 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 for for fighters to, to uh, uh, another platform for fighters to have. Uh, there's no competition whatsoever with the UFC. I'm, I'm just giving the fighters a different avenue um, to to have a choice. Um, you know, uh, the UFC has been doing a wonderful job. They do a tremendous job. They know why you have to commend for what he's been doing, but. I'm just sick and tired of fighters always coming up to me every single day telling me they don't get paid enough money. And and how much like how many times is this a one off for you or, or have you already earmarked three events, four events? What kind of commitment no, and is, investment this are you? Uh, this is obviously the first the first event that we're gonna be promoting. Um, I, I, I figured that I start with a big bang with the two biggest names in, in the MMA world. And uh, and uh, and then we'll take it from there. But I strongly feel that uh, this is not going to be a, a one-off. I, I strongly feel that uh, uh, there's a, a lot of room uh, uh, for growth uh, in this sport. And uh, look, I'm just another player. Uh, I'm just another player in the ball game. And uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. As you know, Oscar, even in the boxing world, like we're moving a little further away from pay-per-view. I know Triple G Canelo on September 15th is going to be uh, pay-per-view, but we're moving. There's less and less pay-per-view. Why debut on pay-per-view? Why not partner up with a network? Well, obviously, the pay-per-view, pay-per-view is uh, is if, if you're fighting on pay-per-view, you're the biggest star on the planet. Um, the pay-per-view is obviously the biggest money generator uh, out there. Uh, till this day, and uh, you know, uh, fighters like Mayweather, fighters like uh, myself and Manny Pacquiao have proved it over and over again. And now, uh, now that you have the two biggest stars in boxing, uh, with Canelo Alvarez and Triple G, uh, the, the platform is perfect—a pay-per-view platform where uh, uh, where millions of people will be watching and will be able to generate uh, uh, a lot of buzz and money for the uh, for the sport of boxing. So uh, um, let's. There are various platforms now to, to choose from, but
but uh, but when you're a pay-per-view fighter, you know you're special. What do you say, Oscar, to people who roll their eyes at the fact that Chuck Liddell's coming back, he's close to 50, Ortiz is close to 45, they're both coming out of retirement, you know about the fighter who hangs around too long, you know about how you know they, they fight, how they look, how they speak. Why these two guys? Why bring back the old guys to headline your first show? Well, I mean, I don't call don't call Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz old, um, you know. And obviously, uh, uh, Chuck Liddell and and and, uh, and Tito Ortiz uh, uh, have spoken to Bernard Hopkins, who uh, who I believe is the oldest uh, boxing champion in the history of the sport, and he was able to do it till he was fifty some odd years old at the highest level. So. It, it, look, Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz are, are, are warriors. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're fighters who, uh, who just want to do it a third time and give the fans the trilogy. And the, the beautiful part about this fight is, is that we know for a fact that it's going to be a great fight. So as, as you prepare for this, you're also preparing for September 15th. That's Triple G Canelo. Uh, the, the first fight is the, I believe, third highest grossing fight in boxing history. Is there any chance... This fight surpasses that. Could it be as big, if not bigger, than Mayweather McGregor? I, I feel like uh, uh, Pacquiao and Mayweather is untouchable at this moment. But is there any chance that this second fight is is a higher grosser than the uh, first fight? There's a there's a huge chance. Um, uh, uh, you know, all everything everything is uh, is is on track uh, uh, to uh, surpass uh, those numbers uh, from the first fight. Uh, we strongly feel that we're going to break some records, uh, um, and uh, you know because people people know that the first time around it was a terrific fight. It was an amazing fight. It was probably one of the best fights that boxing has had in quite a uh, uh, in quite some time. So uh, the fact that there's animosity with both guys, the fact that they're both talking smack, I think I think everybody knows that this this time around there is going to be a knockout. Did you guys have a say in the referee, the judges this time around, so that there's no funny business like the last fight? It was, it was all, it was all a collaboration of, of both teams. Uh, everybody was happy with the, uh, the, with the, uh, with the judging, with the judges uh, for this for this fight the second time around. Uh, you know, my president Eric Gomez uh, flew down personally to Las Vegas alongside. Uh, Triple G's promoter. Uh, they came into an agreement. So the commission is happy. Uh, Triple G's side is happy, and we're happy. Okay. And what do you expect this to do on pay-per-view? Do you think it could get uh, close to two million? Do you think it could be? What? 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 Do you, what, do you, what is the success for you? Absolutely. We we strongly feel that we can get close to that two million homes, and uh, and once again, uh, uh, we're we're tracking to do. Uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, biggest gates in, uh, in, in, in boxing. Uh, so uh, we, we feel that uh, uh, come uh, September 15th that uh, we can break uh, once again some pay-per-view records. Do you, like ballpark, what, what does that gate look like right now? Well, it's, it's definitely going to be uh, 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 by far uh, the third uh, largest once again uh, behind, uh, behind obviously uh, – uh, McGregor and Mayweather and Pacquiao and uh, and the first fight with Canelo and Golovkin. Okay. And do you believe, Oscar, in oversaturation? Do you feel like sometimes too much of a good thing is not a good thing, basically, that there may be too much combat sports on TV these days that you have to pick and choose a little? I mean, you can't go a day without seeing some kind of live fight on some kind of platform. Do you feel like that's something that people need to be concerned about? No, I strongly feel like the more the merrier. I think uh, as long as you're delivering a good product, uh, people are happy. I, I think people, the, the fight fans, the MMA fans, uh, they know when they see a good product. And uh, I've always believed that uh, as long as you're delivering good fights, uh, you can't go wrong. Did you hear about this Logan Paul KSI boxing match a couple of weekends ago in, in England? No, the, I didn't. The two YouTube guys that sold out the Manchester arena, they're not even pro boxers, they're amateurs. And there was there was like 800,000 people watching it for $10 on YouTube. You didn't hear about this at all? I actually did hear about it because my kid told me that 14 years old. Yeah, it's 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 targeted to 14-year-old kids, and it was a smashing success. And a lot of people were saying, like, look, these guys are drawing. They're not even pro boxers, but they're, but they're able to capture the imagination. Why can't you know combat sports do this on a regular basis? And I was wondering if you had some kind of theory as to why they were able to do it so well when you know big fights are few and far between, and and especially like big money-making fights. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, it goes to show you that uh, it goes to show you that social media, um, the digital platform, is uh, is right now uh, a king. Um, let Logan Paul uh, and and uh, uh, um, his his opponent, uh, I don't want to pronounce his name, KSI, uh, did a phenomenal job in promoting it. Obviously, they're not fighters, they're not boxers. Uh, I heard the, the the fight was kind of like a sparring match, mm. but look. Kids are paying for it. They're watching it. Uh, these guys are YouTube sensations. Uh, more power to them. Before I let you go, Oscar, I just want to quickly wrap up on November 24th. Liddell Ortiz, are they a part of Golden Boy MMA in terms of management? Like, once this fight is over, are they going to be working for you as well? Well, no, they're, they're not, they're not uh, under, under a management contract. Uh, I am promoting, I am promoting uh, 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 Chuck Liddell and, and yeah. Tito Ortiz. Uh, uh, it might be it might be a one-off. I might continue uh, promoting MMA, but uh, for now, uh, I, I'm I'm just focusing and, and promoting uh, Chuck Liddell and Peter Ortiz. What would like? What's how do you decide if you're going to continue or not? Like, do you have a benchmark? Do you have something that you need to see get done in order to determine if you're going to keep going with this? Oh, it's like I like I like I had a gut feeling when I started going to board promotions. Um, I'm going to go with my gut. Um, obviously, we know that it's going to be a huge success because of the names and because of the uh, rivalry they've had over the years. Uh, but I'm just going to go with my gut and see how I feel. You've talked about you know, being sick when people come up to you and tell you about how you know, little they're making. One of the hot topics in MMA is a union. Do you feel like UFC fighters should form a union, or do you feel like combat sports just isn't structured to accommodate something like that? Well, look, I mean, obviously, UFC is the 800-pound gorilla, and um, um, I don't know anything about uh, what kind of contracts they sign, but the only thing I know is is that fighters are unhappy, and fighters are always complaining to me personally. And I'm not saying that UFC fighters are complaining to me because I don't, I don't deal or talk to any fighters who are under contract. That's, that's my number one rule. But fighters who uh, are free agents maybe are saying, look, we don't get paid enough money. We don't. We we deserve more, and uh, I tell them right back. Yes, you do. You deserve more. So, part of the reason why I'm starting uh, Golden Boy MMA is to make sure that these fighters are treated fairly. Have you heard from? Gotta get to another call, my man. What's that? I gotta get to another call. Okay, thank you, Oscar. I appreciate it. All right, brother. All right there he is, Oscar De La Hoya, saying goodbye uh, somewhat abruptly, um, but interesting stuff. Uh, I didn't know that we had a, a, a you know. A, What's the word? A heart out, as they say in the business. But I appreciate him coming on. Good to hear from Oscar. And very interesting to hear him say that, yes, they do want to stick around in MMA. Although what's also interesting is that it doesn't sound like that is a set thing. For now, it seems like a one-off, and then they'll see how it goes. I've heard about some other names that may be involved. None that would shock us, as he, as he put it but some names that are notable in our little world, our little circle. So that's November 24th, Inglewood, California, the Forum, uh, events like UFC 199, Bellator had an event there this past year in January, the Quinton Rampage Jackson and Chael Sonnen event. I wonder why he got it. Did I bother him there? I don't understand. I wonder why he got off so abruptly. Um, but there you have it. Oscar De La Hoya, Golden Boy MMA. That is a thing. November 24th, Inglewood, uh, California. Chuck Liddell versus Tito Ortiz 3. No other fights have been announced. And it's, it's, it's honestly been a strange rollout. It's like there hasn't been a press release. There hasn't. Chael doesn't think that this is a real thing. Chael doesn't think that push comes to shove. This will actually happen. He is convinced that this is not going to happen. He said it on our show several weeks ago. He believes that this is just some kind of PR stunt. And, and, and Oscar isn't poking the bear. He isn't going after the UFC. He isn't trying to rile up Dana White or anyone at the UFC. And it was interesting to also hear him say that he's not talking to any UFC fighters when initially he was kind of saying, well, you know, I hear from people. Well, who are these people that you're talking to? Um, they're getting a, you know, a, a slice of the revenue, but how much of this revenue are they getting? So uh, hopefully as time goes on, We'll get more answers, but it was good to hear from Oscar on this Tuesday afternoon. I know he's in New York City as well. We couldn't get him uh, to stop by the studio because he was at the other ESPN studio, which is all the way downtown. That is quite a trek, but good to hear from him as Triple G Canelo uh, gets closer and closer. It's in 11 days, and November 24th gets closer and closer.